Uh, I thank the organizers uh, uh, for inviting me to come to this uh, very cogent and very compelling event. And I also thank them, I thank Karen and Sally uh, for making this event possible. My presentation is on, uh, on Ethiopia's occupation uh, of Somalia and, 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 and of, uh, its impacts. There are many here who have not really been, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, been able to keep themselves abreast of uh, uh, how things have actually been unfolding in Somalia recently. Now, for the benefit of those, uh, Ethiopians invaded Somalia in December of 2006. Mili Zinaw, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, still contends that his troops went to Somalia, <coughs> or went into Somalia, in order to protect his nation's sovereignty because of the threat of the Union of Islamic Courts. He also argues that he went in there uh, in order to protect the internationally recognized transitional federal government of Somalia. <coughs> However, Mili Zinawi's discourse of nation sovereignty and perhaps protection of the so-called internationally uh, recognized government has been vehemently, aggressively, vigorously contested, not only by the Somalis inside the country and the, and the diaspora, but also by the whole world, including, of course, Western countries. His insistence to posit uh, the Union of Islamic Courts as an organization or as a terrorist organization, as he says, that represents an existential threat uh, to Ethiopia was nothing too many but just an incendiary foolishness. I have sometime back come across a report, uh, a special report entitled Violence, Political Violence and democratic uncertainty in Ethiopia. This report was uh, uh, prepared by a professor at the uh, Georgetown University. I think her name is Lara Smith. And it was commissioned by the Political Transitions in Africa project managed by the United States Institute of Peace. The report indicated, among other important, very important uh, uh, facts, how Melizy now and, he, and his EPRDF party. For those of you who don't actually know what EPRDF stands for, it stands for People's Revolutionary Democratic Front. You know, revolutionary. These are things that you, you always hear you know, in, in, in Africa. Uh, I could have actually made it short term, not short term, but you know, safer. Well, it says that this party manipulated their involvement in Somalia to provide them with useful distraction from the deteriorating domestic policies and human rights violations uh, in the country. The report goes further to assert that following the flawed elections of 2005 uh, in Ethiopia, domestic and regional politics have deteriorated and regional conflict and authoritarian governance <coughs> have increased. So my argument is Ethiopia's occupation of, of, of Somalia has nothing to do with uh, his nation sovereignty uh, or the protection <coughs> of the so-called people government uh, in Somalia. Occupation, Ethiopia's occupation of Somalia <coughs> is literally an Abyssinian dream come true. Mili Zinawi is in Somalia to stay with the purpose of executing the plan that his predecessors had failed to implement. The Abyssinian leaders had always considered Somalia as part and parcel of the Ethiopian Empire that stretches from the Abyssinian plateaus down to the coastal area in the Indian Ocean. And it's for that reason that the Ethiopians have put forth at the UN in 1947, 
put forth at the UN, uh, had put forth at the UN at the United Nations in 1940, uh, that's sort of premise that they had actually put forth at the UN in 47, when the independence of former Italian Somalia was deliberated. Ethiopia had then vigorously rejected the idea of independent Somalia because it had insisted that it was part of this entity. Ethiopia had participated in 1884 in the colonial, uh, during the colonial partition of Somalia, in collusion, of course, with France, Britain, and Italy. And it was also adamantly opposed to the unification of British and former British and Italian Somalia in 1960. These are historical facts. I can be contested uh, if there are other uh, facts that contradict this. Ethiopia, from the very beginning, waged a very debilitating campaign <coughs> of the institutions that have emanated from Africa. Well, why? Because uh, Africa <coughs> could not produce millions in our proxies. There were a few of them, but there were not enough. And that was the reason why uh, Ethiopia had uh, organized a meeting of all Somali warlords, and they are now part of the present transitional, federal, so-called transitional <laughs> federal government, put them together in a place called Awasa, uh, and then form an organization called SRRC uh, to try and abort uh, the uh, outcome. And in fact, at the end, they were able to, uh, that is the reason why Embergati had eventually emanated. Now, drawing on this, on this uh, very few facts that I have actually articulated, uh, it is really insane for our part uh, to, and very outrageous from our part, to interpret the argument that Libya's in our schools are in Somalia to salvage the transition of the federal government or to counter the threat of the union government. Ethiopia's occupation has escalated chaos and insecurity in the, uh, in the mobilization and other areas of Somalia. The transitional federal, the so-called transitional federal institutions instituted by the Ethiopians at Imbagati have been rendered more irrelevant and more illegitimate. By escalating chaos and insecurity in Somalia, <coughs> Ethiopia had made it very difficult and maybe impossible for Somalis to engage in any form of reconciliation and dialogue. Or for Somalis to think about uh, the modicum of negative peace required, let alone create the conditions that are propitious uh, for a lasting and durable peace uh, in Somalia. Uh, now, if I actually talk a little bit about, for instance, how much impact this occupation can actually have on the environment, I can argue that uh, Ethiopia's occupation will ultimate, ultimately have large-scale impacts on the country's natural resources, resource wealth. Because the government in Ethiopia is desperately in need of immediate revenue to sustain its military activities in Somalia, it will continue to plunder our resources. I'm saying our resources because I'm a Canadian now, but originally from Somalia. I would like to conclude this short presentation by saying that if we have to fight Ethiopia's occupation of Somalia, we cannot do it uh, through a tribal or a clan mechanism. We can't hijack opposition and make it a clan opposition. It has to be a national opposition. Every Somali has to participate. Now, we can't afford to alienate uh, Somalis by calling or by labeling the current movement that is going on uh, in Somalia as a clan uh, a movement or by saying that the people that are really uh, uh, or the victims are, are of, of a particular clan, uh, not really of all Somalis. And I hope uh, we in the diaspora as well as inside Somalia will be able to come up with a, a national uh, point that will counteract uh, the, uh, the designs that are called
the mystic design is of, uh, of middle-severity government impact. 